Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at another HD NES clone console. This one is from Gamers Tech and it's called the 8-Bit HD. And we looked at the Hyperkin a couple of days ago. This is less expensive and you get an extra controller. So this one is $30 versus $40 on the Hyperkin. You get two controllers with it and it also has uh, NES compatible game ports on it. We'll be taking a full look at how all of this works uh, in my full review, which you'll find at lon.tv. Now it's funny here on the box, I don't think it says anywhere on the box that it plays NES games. It does say so on their Amazon uh, selling page, so they're probably being very careful here. Uh, but they're also very careful to warn you to make sure that the games are clean before you pop them in. And I'm sure they get a lot of calls uh, from people that try to play an old game that's been in the closet for 20 years and uh, can't get it to work. So definitely get those games clean before you fire this thing up. Now, what interested me about this, not only its price, but also the fact that it does output to HD. There's so many co uh, clone consoles out there that don't, um, so it's nice to see that. 720p, uh, just like the other one, we're going to be uh, doing a full look at this on my main channel at lon.tv, and I'll also put some samples of how it performs insofar as its output on the extras channel here. So it does feel pretty cheap, but um, it does look functional to me. So I don't think it needs to be fancy for the price tag here. You get a reset button here and a power switch on the front along with two NES compatible game ports. We'll test out a couple of things with this. I'll look at the light gun compatibility with CRT televisions as well as uh, those 8-bit dough wireless adapters too to see how that works here. On the back, you've got your power output input, uh, two RCA jacks for setting it out to a traditional TV and your HD output. Uh, unlike the Hyperkin, there's no PAL or NTSC switch, nor does it look like you can adjust its aspect ratio. So we'll see what kind of video it pumps out when we do the full review. I'm also eager to see uh, how it sounds because that's been one of the uh, big faults of many of these clone consoles is that they don't sound all that great. Uh, here are the controllers. There's two of them in here. They feel okay. They kind of look like an NES controller, a little different, a little more rounded perhaps, but uh, not bad. A little off-center here, it looks like. There's more room on the on the right side than the left, but um, feels okay. Not, not great, but decent enough. The buttons are really kind of squishy, actually. I'm not crazy about the buttons. The D-pad feels uh, pretty decent, but the buttons could be better. But you probably have your own NES controllers, and that will work on this as well. HDMI cable, always good to get that in the box. You got the power adapter, also a nice thing to have, and the RCA cable. So you get everything you need here to get this thing hooked up. And that is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to start playing with this, and we'll do a full review again on the main channel at lon.tv, uh, maybe tonight if I get a good productive afternoon in here. So stay tuned. This is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters Mark Bollinger and Cody Falk. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.